All right. Well, today is April 14th of 2017, and I am interviewing Kelly Gator in Taylorville, Illinois. Uh, Kelly is 52 years old, having been born on October 7th of 1964. My name is Sue Burkholder, and I will be the interviewer. So would you please, um, Kelly, for the uh, recording state, uh, what uh, branch of service that you served in? I was in the Army. Okay, good. Well, let's just start with a little background data. Uh, if you could just say where you were born and a little bit about um, uh, where you were born and maybe growing up a little bit. I was born in Cook County. I was uh, raised on the west side of Chicago. Uh, really wasn't that much. I mean, I did what normal kids do in Chicago. Played the fire hydrants in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Grabbed a hold of a bus and in the wintertime and slide through the snow. You know, we did the things that it was kind of exciting, you know, the other kids wouldn't do in other neighborhoods. We found it to be a little more exciting in our neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know. Other than that, it was the same old childhood as anybody else on the west side of Chicago. Right. Um, did you have siblings? Yes, I got uh, three brothers and four sisters now. You know, uh, my dad, I got a little sister now that's 23, I believe now. Other than that, I mean, I haven't seen her. Mm -hmm. Evident of that. Sure. Um, did any of your other family members serve in the military? Just my son, Lil Kelly. Okay. All right. And so, what were you doing right before you entered the service, and um, why did you decide to to go in? I was doing uh, construction work. I was a carpenter, mm -hmm. and uh, I got laid off. I didn't feel like doing a job search anymore. I was so I decided uh really just on a dare. My god brother Todd, he said, uh, why don't you join the military? Uh, fight Uncle Sam's war. And I told him I'll do it and he dared me to do it, so I did it. I went and signed up and took the test and I didn't think I was gonna pass the test. And I just did it just to shut him up, but then I wind up passing the test. So it was like they came and got me to take me to the MEP station, and uh, I, I guess I signed up and came on with some basic training. Okay. Yeah. And how was that first day or two of basic training? It was rough. It was uh, because of my problem with uh, with authority. So, and you know, the first couple of weeks of basic training, it's all about total control. They want to make sure that you. Uh, that you're able to follow orders. They trying to instill discipline in you, which they did. And uh, in so many ways, you know, I still find it. It's like I, I think back to those days of being the way they disciplined us and taught us discipline. It was like it did me some justice. It was something that I actually needed. You know, I really didn't realize it at the time, but I was kind of a handful. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that. I mean. Sergeant Sacramento, if you ever see this, you know, Sergeant Buchanan, Sergeant Jackson, Sergeant Slaughter, those, you know, was drill sergeants. So, man, I mean, they were pretty good guys, too. And, uh, when you were going through basic training, um, did you make friendships? One guy. That was it, one guy. Handsome. You know, he was always, uh, he was late for everything, so <laughs> we used to call him too late handsome, so I was, he was okay, definitely. You know, I wish I could actually see him right now, you know, when we went our separate ways after basic training. Uh, he was a good guy, he was just, he had a problem with getting up early in the morning, and I've never had that problem, so I used to get him up to make sure he made it to formation on time. Besides that, he had the whole platoon doing push-ups every time he was late. So somebody had to take the initiative to make sure that he got up in the morning. So um, uh, was basic training pretty much just, um, was there anything exciting, I guess, or interesting that happened during basic training? The confidence courses, they were nice. Um, the 
pretty much the camaraderie, trying to compete against other people by me being competitive. So I guess it was the opportune and it was just us against, it felt like us against the world. So I enjoyed that part about it, bringing the guys together so that we can uh, try and win at everything we did, you know. So yeah, that was pretty much a lot of fun. Okay. So when you completed basic training, um, what, uh, did you go for advanced training of any kind? I went to Airborne School uh, in Fort Benning, Georgia. Mm -hmm. I went there. And uh, when I got done with that, I went home on leave for uh, 30 days. Forgot to get paid before I left Fort Benning. So I had to buy a ticket to get to Fort Hood, Texas, which was, <laughs> that was crazy because they forgot. They could have told me to go get my check, but they didn't. And I, I didn't know it basically that I was supposed to go and who to talk to about it. I didn't think I'd get paid until I got to Fort Hood. So I basically had to uh, pay for my own ticket everywhere until I uh, got situated in Fort Hood. Mm -hmm. you know, and I had to pay my mom back, you know, but it worked out. Okay, so you served next then at, at um, Fort, Hood. Fort Hood. When I left Fort Bend, sure. I went to Fort Hood. And what was your job there? My first job there was the uh, company commander drive. I drove, uh, this is going to sound real funny, but his name was Captain Funkhauser. So I drove him around. Couldn't believe how young he was. But uh, yeah, I drove him around the first year I was in, uh, 62nd uh, Engineer Battalion. I drove him. I was the CO's driver. Basically, I had to uh, keep up with all this stuff, uh, drive him everywhere. And then my other job was to keep up with like the lawnmowers and stuff like that that they signed out to in for a battalion, make sure that uh, stayed clean in uh, headquarters company. I had to make sure it stayed clean inside uh, and, uh, basically help with the supply side, side and others. How you doing again? So, so. She was all right too. Sweetest woman I know. Get you to my back. She was real nice. Sometimes too nice. You know, but I enjoyed uh, Fort Hood. And that. Um, so tell me about um, the most interesting thing that might have happened while you were in that position. Oh wow. Uh, what do you mean interesting? I mean, as far as like me just taking a vehicle and uh, <laughs> driving off post a couple of times to do personal errands, which I shouldn't have been doing. <laughs> you know, I mean, or the time we almost flipped it over going and look for a beer wax site. Yeah, that was crazy. It was like driving on his edge up the, the side of this hill or mountain or whatever it was out there. And it was, wasn't was enough room, so it was like we driving. And at this time, Going up, I was okay because I was on the side where the rest of the mountain was, but Captain Funkhouse was on the side where if it go over or the door fly open, he's you know, he was out of there. You know, but when it was coming down, then it was my turn to be on that side. And I'm talking about I was sweating hand grenades coming down that hill because I thought, man, one wrong move and it's it's over with. So that was real that was real interesting. To the point where I was really like thinking about, man, maybe this ain't the job for me driving him around because we had to drive so many places. And a couple of times we got lost out there. And it was like you had to sit back and read the map and find out, figure out where we was at. But other than that, I mean, I had a few good laughs uh, after work, doing things, uh, drinking, which turned around and bite me in the butt later on in life. They got out of control. Be, uh, I'm here because of drinking. I don't know, but that's pretty much like after work we had a lot of fun. I mean, what did you do for entertainment? Oh wow, we used to go to, uh, gym. Went to a couple of wrestling matches that they had uh, on post at the uh, the post gym. They had a really huge gym. Went to a couple of wrestling matches. Played uh, 
all the sports, football, baseball, basketball. You know. uh, went to a lot of movies, uh, they, to the club, the Enlisted Man Club that was on post. And actually, the movie theater was on post. I mean, you think about Fort Hood. Fort Hood is basically like a small city inside of a city, sitting outside, uh, sitting right there by Colleen. And I mean, beautiful place. But yeah, we used to go to the club a lot, hang out in the clubs uh, after work. Uh, baseball games was nice. You know, you had a lot of uh, football games, rough. Hurt my shoulder playing. Yeah. Other than that. No. How was the um, the food and accommodations? Oh, man. I missed, I, swear, I promise, I missed, <laughs> oh man, it was, the food was great. The food, up to me, you go to breakfast and you get the order. The first time I ever had an omelet was in the military. You know, uh, they put the tomatoes, the onions and peppers and uh, the ham and the ground beef and stuff in there. I forgot what the, the size omelet, it was a nice size omelet. I forgot what they called it though. And I fell in love with that omelet. I used to eat that omelet at least five times a week. I was going to breakfast just to eat that omelet. You know, yeah, I, I'm talking about, man, the food was really good. I recommend if you broke and you ain't got no place to go and you can pass the test, go join the Army. Eat, you eat good. You know, no bills. I don't know no place where they feed you. You ain't got to pay no bills and worry about nothing. You know, the Army, take care of you. The food was great. Okay, what um, did you did you do that um, duty the whole time you were there, or did you have different? No, I wind up. Uh, it came up. I wind up going because I couldn't advance. It was like I wasn't going to advance being the CO's driver. Mm -hmm. So once Captain Funkhouse left, I went to the motor pool and started learning how to work on the trucks and vehicles like that. And then uh, we wind up taking a. Uh, uh, we wound up going back to Fort Leonardwood to build bridges there. We was building bridges, uh, uh, bridges across the rivers and things like that, suspended bridges. We learned how to, they took us there to teach us all that. And when we went there, came back, that's when I stayed in the motor pool. That's where I actually got interested in learning how to uh, break down transmissions, which uh, I'm trying to remember the warrant officer who was in charge of the motor pool. He, was, he used to stay on me because I'd take the CO's vehicle up there, and I always expected, uh, because it was the company commander, I always figured, hey, you got to get on this right away, you know. I couldn't have a vehicle broke down. So he told me, you need to start learning how to work on it yourself. And, and why would you tell somebody like me that? Because it's like, okay, show me what I got to do and put somebody with me and, and teach me how to do it. And I learned how to change all and all of that, you know, right there. I got interested in it, so I decided when we got back, I stayed in the motor pool, you know, working down there. You know. That was about it on that. Is that what you did until you uh, left the service? Yeah, until I, uh, until I left. And how about, did you um, stay in contact with your family while you were in? My dad, I used to call him a lot, and uh, I called my mom. She came, actually, my mom came to Texas. I wound up getting married there. My mom came down there to meet the new wife. She lived with us. And that didn't turn out too good for me. Uh, I still had certain ways about me that I just couldn't shake, but I. So, but my mom came down there. She she enjoyed herself. She really did. She really enjoyed herself. Yeah. She enjoyed. She liked. She she liked. She liked my wife. You know, they had fun. Cause she basically that's who basically took her around and showed everything. Cause I was still get up and go to work, and I was still want to hang out with the buddies playing basketball uh, after get off work. That was like, uh, let me see, that was, yeah, yeah, she did. She had a good time while she was there. I didn't prove it at a strip club she went to, 
but she did go. My mom, the old lady, my wife took her to a strip club. Then she come back and she had pictures, and they didn't think I I, I knew about. I found the pictures. I accidentally found the pictures. Doing something I normally don't do, clean up. <laughs> so <laughs> I found those pictures and I. And, you know, it's like, who the hell is this? And what are you doing? Who, who went there? Oh, I took your mother there. She wanted to go out. So I, the only place I could think of was the strip club. Ah, oh, man, you took my mom to the strip club? What well, I'm going to tell my old man? It's like, ah, oh, man, so that, that's one secret. I hope he don't never see this because he don't know about this. But, you know. <laughs> um, did you have anything that you did for good luck or any... Um, object or anything that you had or held on to for good luck while you were in? I used to keep a picture of my mom, you know, in my cargo pocket. Nobody knew about it. You know. I kept a picture of my mom. You know. So thinking back to when you were in, in the um, late 80s, and, you know, seeing how um, things have changed and progressed and you know we went through desert storm desert shield those type of things and to today how do you feel like um, your time in the service might be different from today's soldier it, it should I, I wouldn't I, could, I don't think I can answer that question with just it's uh, definitively it's like my time in the service it was like it was during peacetime and mm -hmm. And we came close. I was almost close to going to Desert Storm. I wind up leaving. But those guys that's now, I can tip my hat to them because they doing something that if I could have just sustained and stopped drinking long enough to pass a PT test, I probably would have did the same thing, which to this day I still regret because I drank so much. And it was like, it was hard for me to just, uh, cut it loose like that and it was like I, I didn't really want to talk to anybody about it and it was like it was always recommended if, you know, but because I didn't really at that time I didn't think I really actually had a drinking problem it was years later that I realized that I actually had a drinking problem but other than that it was like those guys it's like I tip my caps on because they actually doing what I, sh I should have done uh, years ago, but I didn't. You know, I don't know. I really. A, that's one of the things I truly regret in life that I couldn't get my drinking under control. If I could have did that, I probably wouldn't have wind up sitting there doing this interview right now. I probably would have retired a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, then uh, when you were when you got out of the service. Uh, what did you do after you left the service, and how did um, how did you transition? I didn't do well at all. <laughs> I uh, I got a job driving a school bus for especially challenged children, and uh, I used to drive that bus. I actually enjoyed it. But it was, uh, it really didn't pay the bills and it couldn't support and sustain, uh, I couldn't sustain the drinking problem that I had because it was like I wanted to just stay drunk all the time. But that job, I actually enjoyed it because some of those kids, it was like they needed that, that extra help. You know, they needed that extra love, as I like to say. It's like, you know, your family give you love, but it's not like that when you're somebody that genuinely cares, you know, and I was one of those type of guys. It was like I used to, I don't want to say I felt sorry for them because I didn't, but I enjoyed them and I wanted to make sure that they enjoyed me. So a lot of times I would do silly things and, you know, just to get a laugh out of them because it made me feel better knowing that they had one part of their day, that one moment where they actually had a good laugh and it was not at their expense because some people can be cruel and I didn't like that so I always wanted to give them something special 
to remember me by or something that when they see me the next time, they just start smiling because they know it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the one part about that job I actually loved. Have you used your military benefits at all? No. Mm -hmm. okay. Which I plan on doing shortly because I got 231 days and I'm, I'm going to sign up for school. I'm going to go to school when I leave here. Going to school now, as we speak, you know, mm -hmm. I should be taking a test right now mm -hmm. <laughs> of sanitation and uh, safety. But <laughs> I'm doing this, so hopefully the teachers see this and know that you know, hey, did a good job, whatever. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. you know. So, um, how do you feel like your military experience affected your life overall? Overall, is. I mean, it's great to have in the background. It taught me some things about uh, responsibility, that which I, it just takes me a while to get things, but I got it. That's where if I can uh, go back in time and do it all over again, I would definitely do it a whole lot different. You know, I would do it clean, you know, literally clean, clean. It's like, I should have took advantage of this years ago, but I didn't because I, just, I was young and, uh, I was very wild and immature. You know, it was like, at that time, I believed that the world revolved around me, that the world owed me something. And it actually doesn't. And the military tried to show me that, you know, that you got to put the first foot forward to get where you're going. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you're just standing still in life. Mm -hmm. You know, and I really, really wish that I could do it all over again. Um, even though you served in peace time, did your military service change any of your thinking or feelings about the military or even war in general? Yeah, when like uh, coming up uh, on the west side, it's like got the saying, you know, we always say coming up, well, I'm not going to fight the, the white man's war. Mm -hmm. That's the wrong answer. It, it mean, really, it was like we used to say that, and it's like, the thing, you know, we in the hood, we in the ghetto. So it's like, why would I go and fight for this man? You know, and we at this time, we saying we fighting for oil. And uh, it didn't have nothing to do with us. So why would we go and fight? And it was like, when I look back at it now, it's like, it, it was basically for people that was being oppressed. And oppression should always be stood up to. And it was like, always, the bully on the block. Mm -hmm. So somebody got to stand up to the bully on the block. And that's the way I look at the military. The United States Army is the place where they stand up to the bully on the block. You know, they protect those that's less fortunate, those that's too weak to fight their own battles. But as I said, you know, at that time, we, I didn't know anything. It's like now I'm a totally different person. I'm not the same man I was sure. almost 30 years ago when uh, back then. I'm not that same person. You know, I actually had 30 years ago. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sitting back thinking about it, time flew by. Yeah. So what do you feel like it is the most positive thing that you took away from your experience in the service? The most positive thing? Help those can't do for themselves. I believe that's the way, you know, Life should always be. That's the way society should be right now. You, know, you got to appreciate the gifts that you got and take those gifts and use them to help others. It's like you never know the full value of self until you allow yourself to do something for those that's less fortunate. That's when you really actually learn. You know, and I learned that in the military. There's nothing wrong with helping and being kind to others. That was one of the best things, too. That was a good lesson. I heard you saw Sakura just in case. <laughs> so if you could leave a message for future generations who might see or hear your interview, what would it be? Just one message. I would say, uh, the man who chooses the path of least resistance forfeits all his rights to complain down the path he chose. 
That's what I would tell them. Choose wisely. That is it. Is there anything else you can think of you'd like to say or that maybe we haven't uh, covered in this interview? <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking of an incident that happened in basic training, but I it was it was kind of bad. It was like a, this one guy in uh, basic training. He was different than all the rest of the guys. Uh, so this one guy decided to take uh, his protective mask, and he actually took a dump in it. And it didn't turn out good for him. You know, he put that mask on and it was like, really? They found out who did it. They tricked him, actually. They, the guy who did it, when he came forward, they tricked him and said they're going to take the feces and send it off to the lab. And they're going to find out who did it. And when they find out who did it, that person going to So the guys came clean. I don't know if I can. I still remember them two guys' names, but I won't say their name. But, uh. Uh, Sergeant Jackson got a hold of him for about 40 minutes and Sergeant Buchanan took over. I still remember him carrying that big old boulder, running around the battalion. Uh, man, that was, I still remember him crying, apologizing to the guy for doing it because at this time it was, uh, I'm trying to remember who said that, uh, that don't tell. Don't tell if they don't act, don't tell or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the guy who put that mask on, I don't know if I can, you know, can I say he was gay? I mean, I don't know, he was gay. So, I mean, the guy that put it, dumped in his mask, I guess he was uh, homophobic. So he didn't, he was sleeping right next to him. So he found out and all of a sudden, oh man, and it was ugly for him, though. I mean, it was real ugly. That workout he got, it, you see a grown man sitting there crying because it was like, he should have just tapped out and went home. That's the way I look at it. He should actually should have never done it, but he did it, so he had to pay for it. So that was one of the things. And at that time, you know, it was like, he wasn't laughing at the gay guy. Mm -hmm. He was laughing at the guy who did it because of the way he was acting when they finished torching him, well, I guess <laughs> punishing him for taking the dump in that man's mask, he acted more <laughs> gay than that guy. <laughs> that guy was actually gay. But he was like, oh, wow. I'm talking about watching him sit there and, oh, wow. It was pretty funny. So how did that, like for the rest of your time then in basic, um, what was your thoughts when you were you know, any thought came to mind of doing something maybe silly or wild. How did that shape your thoughts the rest of your time? Oh, I wouldn't do it. I was, I was, all, I was squared away then. <laughs> I was squared away, you know, because it was like, like at nighttime when we'll sneak off, you know, it was like we on fire watch, and to be on fire watch is like, you know, the drills downstairs sleep. So when you find that way out the building to go two miles to the bowling alley, after that incident right there, we stopped sneaking out. Yo, we stopped sneaking out. We used to sneak out to the Burger King too. And it was like, wow, yo, let's, let's go to Burger King. So we'd take off and go to Burger King. Yo, come back sneaking in and it's like, how them guys never caught us is beyond me. I, I've always wondered. I, like to meet one of them and ask them, did they actually know we were sneaking out or, or what? Because it was like, I used to sneak downstairs and get on the phone. Uh, it was like we weren't supposed to do it, but it's like I know they down the hallway sleep, so why not? You, know, you would figure we'd be tired from being up all day, exercising and marching everywhere, but we wasn't, we was full of energy. Uh, but then you got a whole bunch of 20 year olds uh, with no discipline. You get what you asked for, <laughs> you know, back then, yeah. Well, um, if there's nothing else that you can think of, is there anything? Mm, uh, 
and, uh, some of the things I did, I don't, they just like, I did a lot of questionable things, you know, so. Well, I don't know, if, you know, they was questionable. Okay, so that's fine. All right, well, um, I want to thank you for agreeing to uh, talk with me today and share your story. And thank you so much for your service to our country. Thank you.